Good morning, friends. Welcome to Legal Maths by Sai Baba Sankara. This video is uh, specially for the IT Act students, Information Technology Act 2000. So, I have already told you the basics, the introductory part also is completed. But anyway, so you have to know the necessity for the induction or introduction of the Information Technology Act. So, this is quite a new subject for all of you. And of course, as students, you know better than me regarding the information technology. So, please remember, this act came into existence in the year 2000 and it came into force from which date 9-6-2000. Actually, the act has to be placed, it was placed before the parliament and Rajya Sabha in the year 1988 itself, 1998. Before that, actually, the UNO, a wing of the UNO by name UNCTRAL, United Nations Commission on the International Trade and Law, International Trade and Law, they suggested the government of India to formulate an act relating to e-commerce. So by that time itself, Best Buy, Amazon, uh, so many other target and others they have come into existence in India also slowly slowly they have occupied the multi-level marketing and if any dispute arises whom we are going to tell where we have to file the case what type of case we have to file so because the offenses are done with the intellectual property the brain it is not visible so what to do for that purpose UNO advised these people please formulate some act ultimately Actually, they wanted to name it as E-Commerce Act, Electronic Commerce Act and E-Governance Act also because at the time, the Chief Ministers and others who were present, they are more interested towards the E-Governance, Electronic Governance, that is paperless governments, paperless governance. In place of paper, let us give recognition for the electronic documents. This is the intention. So ultimately, after a lot of discussions, it has come seen the light of the day in the year 2000 by which time the information technology has come into existence. The artificial intelligence is uh, slowly in the budding stage. Therefore, they have renamed it as uh, Information Technology Act. This is the origin. Then what is the objective? This, this is also very important objective because the new communication systems and the digital technology so these words are buzzing words, uh, digital technology, cyber crime, cyber security, all the cyber cave, all these things. So digital is most, it's not analog, it's a digital. Digital technology, they have made dramatic changes uh, in the way we live. So during 1860, when Lord Macaulay, he has uh, completed the Indian Penal Code, he did not know that a computer is there in the existence. So he did not make any law relating to computers. So totally after the emergence of the computers, our lives were totally changed. So even the business, now you can order anything online. How? Because of the development of the computers. Is it not information technology? So business and consumers, definitely all of them are using the so-called computers. What for? To create, to transmit, and store the information in the electronic form instead of the old traditional filings and other things. So to give, so the main purpose of the Information Technology Act is to get legal recognition for the electronic documents in place of paper documents. For example, the court requires a document to be filed before it. Let us take it as a birth certificate of so on so. Then what the principal or the, of the college, he has to prepare the certificate, then he has to get it typed or written, then he has to put his signature underneath, and then only he has to produce in the court. It will be taken or it will be marked as a, an object. In that place, suppose if computer technology is there, straight away, by the click of a button, you can send it to the court with the digital signature. This is first method. At the initial stage, it was not allowed. For that, the government has to re amend so many acts, amending act. So, yes, law is dynamic. That's why now we call it law is dynamic. So, number one, the Indian Penal Code, it has been amended. Second, 
Indian Evidence Act, Section 65 A and B, yes, they are also amended. In place of document, yes, any electronic document can be produced in the court and it has to be, it is become relevant as per Section 65 A and B of the Indian Evidence Act. So many other sections have also been amended. Not only this, Indian Evidence Act, then the Reserve Bank of India Act, 1932 and I think 1934, 1934, Reserve Bank of India Act, yes, it has to be amended because of the negotiable instrument, uh, truncated checks, all these things. Then, Bankers Book Evidence Act, this has also been amended. Previously, you may be know what is Bankers Book Evidence Act. So, whenever you want, uh, the police wants to seize any ledger or other record, uh, bank officers will say, Sir, we will send the Xerox copy of the sale. At the particular point of time, whenever it is necessary to be produced in the court, then we will come and produce it because it is a running record. Suppose if it is SB account record, I may uh, open SB account now. After five minutes, some other person may open SB account now. Should be a running record, is it not? So, Bankers Book Evidence Act envisages them to give copies or to send the record by electronic mechanism or by digital means. So, please remember. And uh, another important act, Negotiable Instruments Act. It has also been amended in the uh, yeah, 2003, once I think 2000, yeah, 2003 it has been amended. Because I told you, I just I uttered the word truncated check, electronic check, truncated check. This uh, definitely IT Act will allow them to be sent. So, now we will go to the salient features. The Act provides authentication of electronic records, legal recognition of electronic records and digital signatures also. Then, it regulates the certificate that is, this is to getting a digital signature certificate is not that easy. You have to pay the amount at the same time, they will verify and then only grant you. The work is being done by certifying authority. They will test your necessity. Why this man is instantly for this digital signature? That is because uh, people may take the digital signature and send it to foreign countries uh, with uh, all the information. So there is a danger like that. Therefore, they will control the regulating uh, certifying authorities. And uh, they provide this act provides for the damages to the computers and also for failure to furnish the information. While discussing the duties of the intermediaries, we will tell you all these things in detail. And uh, important is Establishment of Cyber Appellate Tribunal, CAT. Of course, CAT means Central Administrative Tribunal is also there, but Cyber Appellate Tribunal is there. So, certain times, intermediaries, uh, the controller may impose them some fine. Certifying authority may, may reject to give you the digital signature. Then where to go? Can you file a case in the civil court? Absolutely no jurisdiction. Just like uh, the Electricity Act. In Electricity Act cases, you cannot file a case in the court. You have to go for the tribunal only. Like that, the cyber appellate tribunal is there. You know what is a tribunal. Tribunal is equal to court. But in tribunal, the persons who are well versed with the topic, particularly the information technology aspect, then they will be sitting and they will be disposing the cases. Even an ordinary judge may not know the uh, meaning of phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Then vlogging, then blogging. All these words, we do not know the but persons taking the technical field, definitely they know meaning of the same. They can dispose the cases. That's why the use of tribunal. So this is a cyber appellate tribunal. Then it also provides for confiscation. If necessary, the court can confiscate the computers, the CDs, etc. If they are suspected to be used in the commission of offense. So, we will be telling you the parliamentary attack case in which the confiscation of CDs were there. Then, in this condition, please remember the investigation. Investigation should be done by the rank of a DSP officer, officer of the rank of DSP. It was in your book, it have been written, it might have been written as a CA, but it has been amended. Now, DSP is competent to investigate into the offenses because the cadre will be better. It provides for the constitution of Cyber Regulation Advisory Committee. So definitely there should be some advisory committees. It provides for that also. Briefly, these are the advantages or this is the introduction for the so-called uh, uh, 
uh, information technology act i have given notes also please read this and uh, enrich your legal knowledge with this i am stopping thank you very much